Galatone, whose Greek name means Gala, that is, milk, is an ancient village in Salento, placed in a network of agricultural communities in which pasture farming was a source of richness and local development. It has a short trade of Ionian coast north of Gallipoli and is one of the ten most populated municipalities in the province of Lecce, having got the title of city in 2005. Once, Coria was a term given to the houses like Galatone to define those centres of noble Byzantine and Greek origins and where the Greek language mixed throughout time with the local dialect. Porta San Sebastiano, once also called Porta dell'Antro, dates back to the 19th century, but it was repaired immediately after the tragic earthquake occurred in 1743. It is divided into three parts by four Doric columns that rise imperiously to the sky. In the middle there is an arch with a semicircular vault with the crests of the feudal lords of the time Pinelli Pignatelli and Della Chiesa. The wonderful door is then enriched by the statue in Lecese stone of the saint patron of Galatone, San Sebastiano, placed on a pedestal. It was sculpted by the master Pantaleo Latini, who completed and gave it to the village in 1859. The clock tower was completed in 1809 and it is really interesting from the stylistic point of view having two pair windows. On the southern flank of the tower we can admire a fantastic meridian still present and working. The sedile, close to the clock tower, was the original seat of the civic assembly of the University of Galatone. It was built by Onofrio Fanuli in 1589 and it was also the headquarter of the Municipal Civic Plenary Assembly until 1870. The Norman Palace rose on the ruins of an ancient castle rebuilt in the 11th century. The works to enlarge and strengthen the fortress were accomplished by the feudal lords who followed one after the other throughout the years, starting from the Falcone family in 1192 until the Gentiles eight years later. In 1556, the castle changed its connotation and from a military fortress it turned into a gentle palace. This happened thanks to the new owners, the Squarchaficos, noble Genovese bankers committed to business and affairs. They provided the palace with the actual gate portal that completely substituted it the using of the drawbridge. The monumental façade, on the other hand, was softened between the 16th and 17th century on Pinelli Pignatelli's family's request, as also the windows and balconies sumptuously decorated in Baroque style were modified. In 1927, the Marquise Anna Ravaschieri Pinelli Pignatelli decided to give the whole palace to the minor friars of Adolorata, by stopping this way the long and prosperous ownership of the Pinelli Pignatelli noble family.
Pinelli Tower was realized in 1267 during the Angevin period. At that time, it was surrounded by a moat, like all the 16th century city walls. Once the tower had a role of mere passive defense that is proved by the flat surfaces of the whole structure, little suitable to resist to the heavy artillery. In the 19th century, the ground floor that in old times hosted the ashes only played the role of stable, as it is shown by the feeders obtained in a thick and solid wall. Upstairs, there is a wide room that considered it a safe residence in case of siege. The tower was restored in 1969 and, from that moment on, because of its centrality in Ganadolin's life, it has become the headquarters of the Proloco. industrial oil mill in Galatone, placed in the Pinelli Pignatelli Palace, is a mix of wisdom and labours. From the exclusive architectonica point of view, the oil mill is stunning for its size and its sumptuousness. It has a quadrangular layout of about 600 square metres and it is divided in 16 spans covered by starry vaults. The architectural structure has been obtained from the local calcareous block of stone. Highly important to the social as well as to the working life of the local people, the oil mill was daily visited at least by 100 people, altogether committed in the extraction of common oil and fine oils. The presence of 72 gas lamps allowed the grinding night and day. This gas was produced by the combustion of processed vegetable scraps in a half-buried boiler. Today, it represents the last example in the province of Leche of a well-equipped structure for a continuing job. At about 800 meters straight ahead and southeast from Galatone, Fulcignano has represented the emblem of a way of life deeply steeped in Greek and Byzantine culture. At Fulcignano House's best, tensions with the neighboring Galatone started to sharpen, maybe because of their different ethnic, linguistic, and cultural origins. As a consequence, in 1335, despite being part of the same territory, a hard battle between the two populations started. The inhabitants of Galatone won against Fulcignano and destroyed it. The architect, maybe one of the best ones ever guarded in Salento, reminds that of an Islamic castle, like the Sicilian castles, that are affected by the eastern architectonic influxes transmitted by the Crusades. The walls, made of local sandstone, were the peculiarity of the whole building because it made the visitor stand in awe for its imperviousness. It was about 8 meters high, 75 meters long on the longer side and 49 on the shorter. Its no small thickness was about 8 feet.
Palazzo Lercari was defined the Palace of Shame because of the state of disrepair it suffered for a long time. It was one of the most important monuments of Galatone. In fact, the municipality upgraded it and on the 30th of July 1958 it was inaugurated in memory of Antonio de Ferraris, called Il Galateo, the most important academic and cultural figure of Galatone. The library inside of it has got 5,500 volumes of great cultural and literary value. Given the importance reached, the municipal library in 2007 became integral part of the library in Polo Salento being inserted in the development plan SBN of Puglia. great fascination and cultural depth is the Leonardo da Vinci's Museum of the Machines, run by Creative Amens Association and inside Pinelli Pignatelli Palace. Since 2009, the Cultural Association organizes an exhibition entitled Leonardo da Vinci in the City of the Galateo, work of the Galatones inhabitant Giuseppe Manisco, who, keen on Leonardo's genius, decided to rebuild about 70 of da Vinci's works. A unique trip among the war, the architecture and the technology machines. Hygroscopic, temporary revolving bridges, floating on boats and only one span, and moreover, airspeed indicators, bearings, compasses. There is even a still working multiple barrel catapult everything embellished by descriptive panels. A sensorial and touching trip through physical principles, war devices, curiosities and anecdotes of an extraordinary life spent on investigating the secrets of universe. Always inside of Pinelli Pignatelli Palace, there is one of the most famous vintage radios of the time. Besides some 19th century speakers of particular design of brands like Safa, Fonola, Magnanide, Telefunken, Radio Marelli, there are more than 100 receivers coming from different countries. In addition to the hall dedicated to the radios, there is another one, next dedicated to the famous Guglielmo Marconi, celebrated with a bust in bronze. Here it has been set up a telegraphic station with various scientific tools such as the classical Rumkopf spool and the Wimps Sparks conductive machine. The monument in honor of Antonio de Ferraris is the most tangible example of the deep respect that the city of Galadone dedicates to its most important man. The Galateo, in this way is known by the local and the national history, received its first literary rudiments by the Basilian friars from Galadone by completing his humanistic studies in Nado and finally moving to Naples as an adult. Here, he studied the art of medicine and perfected the teachings of philosophy and literary sciences. He was, in fact, a man of extraordinary culture and dedicated to his job, so that Galatone reminds him and celebrates him as an expression of Galatone's literary knowledge by honoring him besides his wonderful studio also in the garden of Palazzo Belmonte.
The little church in honor of the Virgin of Odigitria, or Santa Maria del Lidro, dates back to the 12th century, but unfortunately there is little of it today. Its interior, characterized by a barrel vault, was once well decorated and embellished with some scenes taken from the Passion of Christ. In the middle of the structure, we can still admire the paintings of Madonna de Lidria that indicates her son Jesus the way to salvation. Other murals represent saints of the Eastern liturgy by demonstrating the deep past that Salento had with cultures coming from the other side of the Mediterranean Sea and with the Byzantine cults, relationships that, on the other hand, the leading culture tried to bury. Galadone also shows a deep cultural tradition as far as the visual arts and images are concerned with the wonderful Cinema della Minerva. A unique work in its genre, closed for a long time and recently reopened. The Cinema della Minerva today represents a flagship for Galadone and its people as it is a place in which culture and art blend indissolubly to decant the beauty in the poetry of visual arts. One of the most suggestive areas of the whole Ionic coast in Salento is Montagna Spaccata, in the locality La Reggia, situated in the trade of coast that, from Lido Conchiglie, leads to Santa Maria al Bagno, a naturalistic area of undoubted landscape beauty. The rocky coast but rich in access points to the sea is characterized by little caves of calcareous origins, more or less submerged, and by the presence of coral species of different natures that, throughout time, unfortunately, man has contributed to destroy. This wonderful structural variety, as well as the diversity of wildlife, make La Reggia a real natural treasure in the sunlight. A place where silence and meditation represent the key points for those people who want to enjoy such spectacle and live for a while in close symbiosis with the coast wildlife. 